Hey, hello, it's Jason here. I'm just making a quick follow-up to my Timney Alpha Glock uh, uh, trigger video from before, if you have not seen that video. Uh, this video will uh, not make any sense to you unless you go back and watch that other video. I will post a uh, link in the description uh, once I have it all uh, ready to go here. So in a previous video, I talked about uh, the Timney Alpha Glock trigger and how um, it eliminates some of the design safeties of the Glock design. Uh, just a quick little review. We have a Timney Alpha Glock uh, trigger installed at the rear. This functions as a sear on the Timney Alpha Glock trigger. Traditional Glock has a crucifix. It's part of our trigger bar right here. When you pull the trigger to the rear, the crucifix, which is curved upward, will cock the striker and then as the trigger comes further to the rear, the connector causes the trigger to drop downward, uh, coming off the sear or the striker, releasing the striker and firing the weapon. Also here at the front of the trigger bar is our, um, this hump here, contacts on the bottom of the slide, it pushes up on a plunger, uh, which opens up the channel for the striker to have a clear path uh, to fire the gun. Um, the Glock has what's called a drop safety. People are getting confused about what that means. It does not mean it makes the gun safe to drop. However, uh, that is one of the safety tests that was done when gl the Glocks were designed. They were dropped from a height of 30 feet onto concrete multiple times uh, with a uh, round loaded similar to this with no projectile no powder, just a primer, uh, to see if that primer would be set off, uh, which if it was a live round would have fired, you know, a, a real round. Now, <clears throat> the drop safety on the Glock is, we can see part of it here is this shelf. This shelf continues underneath this trigger bar here. And on this side of the trigger bar, if we flip it over, there's a little tab, it's kind of hard to see, but it sticks through into a little horizontal slot here. Now that is gonna prevent this trigger bar from being able to be pushed down unless the trigger is pulled, which also would cock the striker. You're gonna to ha have to kind of bear with me if you've watched that other video, you know about this, the crucifix that would be at the back here, which would be cocking the striker as the trigger was being pulled. When it gets about here, um, it's gonna rotate against the connector and start to drop down the drop safe ledge slopes down at this point, allowing that trigger bar to come down. As it comes down, after it goes back, it releases the striker. Now, that can only happen when the trigger is pulled. Right now, again, we cannot push down, no matter how hard we try, we cannot push down on that trigger bar. And the sear on the uh, trigger bar is the rear of the crucifix. So you can't push down on that sear because it's the same piece of metal here, which has been removed on the Timney. What the Timney uses instead is a spring loaded uh, sear to replace that. When the trigger bar comes to the back, it pushes down on the spring loaded sear. This spring loaded sear does not move rearward to cock uh, the Glock. Hey, I'm a poet and I don't even know it. So when the gun is uh, cocked, the striker is going to be held at full tension because this is all the way back of where the crucifix would be when the trigger is pulled. But there is nothing but a spring preventing this from lowering. It has no connection to the Glock drop safety ledge because that would have to be part of the trigger bar for that to, to work. So we only have spring tension holding it up at, with the striker at full tension uh, keeping that striker cocked. Now, if there should be some sort of shock force, say a, an abrupt shock force from underneath, let's say with a mallet, right? Or a drop from an extreme height and the gun lands just the wrong way, that inertia could cause this to drop away from the striker. Also, when we pull the trigger, because this is under full tension from the striker right here, and it begins to lower if we have it pre-tensioned in. Pre-tension, you see how it drops just a little bit right there? When it's under full tension, if I release the trigger, 
the sear holding this under full tension is not going to allow that weak ass little spring to raise this back up. It's basically going to be teetering on the edge of ready and wanting to fire. So at that point, it could very, it could more easily um, release the striker due to inertia. Now, it's not all bad because we still would have the, the striker block, which I have removed, right, for illustrative purposes. The striker block, if the trigger is not pulled, would be sitting in your um, slide over here and dropped down until you pull the trigger, trigger, right, when the trigger would come back, it would push this up and move this section here out of the way so that your striker would be able to have a clear path to hit the round. So we do still have our striker block as a safety. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate that when this gun is put together without the striker block, since that's the only thing now, instead of having the safe action of striking, of uh, correction, cocking the striker and the drop safety, those two features are no longer present. This is our only feature preventing the gun from firing when we're not pulling the trigger other than that gimmicky little tab that's on a Glock trigger, which is really the least important of all the safeties. So if we assemble this and we have a uh, fabricated gunsmith rear plate, right, because Brownells was out of them when I did my first trigger job decades ago, right? We don't have the um, striker block, so the um, extractor, you know, is not held in with anything other than the spring tension of the extractor plunger and spring. But the purpose of a uh, gunsmith block here is it's cut away so that we can access the uh, crucifix on a standard Glock when you're setting the over travel. If you set the over travel too short when you pull the trigger, I don't know if we can see on the inside, and this is again, not even not a uh, stock Glock anyway, but as that trigger would be coming back, right? Um, if it if it stops before it lowers the uh, crucifix enough, you see how the that second sear is being lowered by our trigger. So if it didn't lower enough to release the striker, what you would do is you would put a punch in there and push down on it the rest of the way to release it. However, you would not be able to do that if the trigger was released because with the trigger released, if we remember from the inside that. Um, the cross part of the crucifix is resting on top of the horizontal shelf, which is the Glock drop safety. So no amount of pushing down on the rear of that crucifix that is holding back your striker would release it unless it's basically pulled almost all the way back, right? To where it almost wants to release. That's not the case with the Timmy. So if I cock this, uh, well, we can see on the inside now, but I am going to uh, reach inside with a little pair of, you can just use a, uh, it's just whatever I have handy right here. I'm going to reach in and grab onto that and we're going to listen for a click. I'm going to push it down. I'm not pulling on the trigger. My hands are out of the way. Got to get in from the side, I think here. These do not grip very well. Push it down. Where are we? There we go. I don't know if you could hear that. Right. But I was able to push down on that sear and you heard that click. That was the striker being released. Now, if we could look inside we see from the breech face, we would see the striker sticking out through the front of the breech. It would have fired the gun. Now, some people are saying that when we have the Timney, that the horizontal part of the trigger bar is gonna capture that striker. Make sure that we go, there we go which is just simply not the case. It sits too far forward. So they're saying that the striker, which would be all the way back here, 
if it releases by accident through this getting pushed down some way other than through trigger pull, right? Like I said, a shock force, inertial force, releasing that striker. They're saying, well, this is going to catch it here and keep it from firing. This is way too far forward and sits too far low. On a uh, regular Glock, the rear part of this crucifix curves upward and sits quite a bit higher than this horizontal surface here. So the bottom of that striker is just uh, maybe about 15 thousandths below the top edge of this. And it's going to clearly pass by that. And even that wouldn't even matter because it doesn't even need to go that far forward to fire the gun. We're going to show you, right? So what I have is, let me put this back together. We have some inert, well, mostly inert rounds here, right? We have a primed case. Uh, this, the casing has been sized. There's no powder. There's obviously no projectile. If this is chambered and I can release the striker without pulling the trigger, since there is no plunger uh, blocking that striker, it should fire. Right, we'll explain why that might be concerning here in a moment. So, let's see if we can load this in. Should be sized. Yeah, sized in there. All right, it's loaded in there. Now, this is going to be kind of loud, even though it's just a primer. I'm going to put on Ear Pro and Eye Pro. Always better to be safe than sorry, right? So, let me get my ears on. And I'm sure for most of your people, most of these, uh, most of you people, I'm probably over explaining this, but for some people, they just cannot understand uh, why this might be a problem. Hopefully this will help them understand. So the gun is cocked. We've got a primer, primed case inside. Um, I'm going to release that striker, same way I did before. See if I can catch it on film this time. Going in there, push down. All right, I'm sure we could hear that. See the smoke coming out of the end. Okay. There we go. So if we look at the back of the primer, that's got a big old hit on the back of it. Nothing stopped that striker from hitting that, that primer because Glock intended, if we had two of those three safeties fail, that that plunger would be in there. Now, if this was installed, we would not have had the gun fire. It would have blocked the striker and prevented it from firing, even though it we released the striker in a way it is not meant to be released. Which again, I'm simulating, let me take these ears off. I'm simulating what might happen if a gun experiences an extreme shock force, which is what this drop safety ledge is meant to protect against. Also, the safe action of cocking the striker by the action of pulling the trigger is like a double action revolver in a way. It doesn't cock the, there isn't a hammer, but it's the gun can't be cocked if the trigger isn't pulled to the rear. Then it can't be fired unless the trigger is pulled far enough to the rear so that this can drop away from the drop safety. You see where this ledge starts to drop off here? Just forward to this little edge. If this is any further forward, I can't push down on that. Let me get it right there. Can't push down on it. Would not release. When it comes back here, you can push down on it. Regular Glock um, would have that drop safety. This does not have the drop safety. So let's go ahead and take away one of the three internal safeties we were talking about. One of those being the drop safety. The other one being the safe action. Cocking of the striker as the trigger is being pulled. And then the third one and last one, which we disabled is that firing pin plunger. Now, a stock Glock is gonna have all three of those with a stock Glock trigger working for safety. When you put a Timney in there, you're eliminating two of those three safety features and you're left with nothing but this. If I'm carrying appendix, 
I am not going to trust my jiggly bits to this little piece right here. Just as I wouldn't trust a Series 80 1911 um, firing pin block from preventing that firing pin from firing if the hammer drops. Right? It's just not enough for safety. That's why Glock puts three internal safeties with the addition of the little gimmicky trigger safety that we have there. So for those of us that may have been confused about um, what is still working, what would happen if the striker was released with the Timney, you know, by accident without pulling the trigger, I hope that clears it up for you, all right? If this doesn't work to prevent that striker from hitting that primer and it's released through a shock force, some sort of inertial force from underneath, right, which would cause that to drop, or we have pre-tensioned the trigger as if to uh, come to a target to fire, but then we change our mind and then we've backed off of it and that doesn't rise back up because it's overcoming the friction of the striker holding against it, it could fire, right? If this part fails, I want all three of my safeties in effect, not just one. So I hope that clears things up for some people. And um, if you have any comments, questions, um, you're still not quite understanding uh, the problem with the Stimney trigger. Uh, for carry, I'd say it's fine for competition because I'm not loading it till I go to the ready line. Um, I don't think it's legal for IDPA. IDPA, the rule makers just haven't figured out how drastically this changes the internal design yet, but I'm sure that once they do, this would not be legal for IDPA, but should still be legal for USPSA. Um, I'd say it'd be fine for competition in those kinds of competitions because you're not loading it till you get to the line. And then you're unloading and clearing it as soon as you shot your last round and you're always keeping the, the weapon downrange. For everyday carry, where that muzzle might be pointed at some very important body parts, um, especially when carrying appendix, I would definitely not be running this Stimney trigger. Stick with a stock Glock. Get a trigger, trigger job done on a stock Glock um, fire control group. It might not be as good as the Timney as far as uh, how crisp it is, the take up, how clean the brake is, but it's a lot safer. All right, everybody, have a good one.